This video will be the answer key for the sample test for chapter 7, um, the first half anyway. And uh, some of these I'll go over rather quickly with little to no explanation. And others I may go a little more in depth um, based on what I think you might be struggling with. If there is something that you uh, aren't understanding and I don't explain it well enough, just shoot me an email and I should be able to answer that rather quickly. So for number one, um, it's negative 1.8 to the zero power, and we've talked several times that anything to the zero power is one, so the answer is D. Number two, you have negative five to the negative third, so we wanna take care of that negative third exponent. Notice that it's only being applied to the five, so that negative is gonna stay up on top, or essentially the negative one will stay up on top. And that puts that five to the third down in the bottom, five to the third, um, is 125, but if you look through the answers, you can see that that uh, option is not available. So for letter A, the answer negative 1 over 5 to the third. Three, we have uh, 5 to the negative second, so that's 1 over 25 times 1, so the answer is C careful on number four. Uh, these fours are not coefficients. These fours are bases, and so when you have like bases, we add the exponents. So you're doing negative three plus three plus ten, so that's four to the tenth, or letter C. Number five, the seven and the six are exponents, so those you're multiplying together. Oops, not too far. So those you're multiplying together, six times seven is forty-two, and then you get x to the negative fifth, which means it needs to go to the bottom. So 42 over x to the fifth, the answer is A. Number six, again, is a pretty tricky one because oftentimes students want to multiply six times six times six, but again, these sixes are bases. And so when you have like bases that are being multiplied together, you add exponents. Okay, so what are the exponents? The exponents are one, m minus three, and m. And when you add those together or combine your like terms, you get 2m minus 2. You are not multiplying the sixes together, so the answer here is a. Number seven, also a. Number eight is c. Number nine is B. Again, these tens are bases, so they can't be reduced. You don't cancel out the tens. You just subtract the exponents. So it's 10 to the negative second, which is 1 over 10 squared, which is letter B, 1 over 100. Here we're moving the decimal two places to the left, so 1 and 2, so 0 0.06, letter B. Go on to the second page. Uh, not written in scientific notation, and really it should say proper scientific notation, and that's letter D because this number uh, is too big. Write the following number in scientific notation. And again, it should be proper scientific notation, but it's letter A. Ordering from least to greatest. I'm going to put them all in scientific notation, proper scientific notation, so that we are sure we're comparing them correctly. The first number becomes 3.4 times 10 to the third. The last number is 4.35 times 10 to the second. So now we rank them. The smallest one is the 8.11 times 10 to the negative third, followed by 435, then 34 times 10 to the second, and finally, 1.2 times 10 to the seventh.
simplifying expressions now. <clears throat> and again, I may go over some of these quickly. Uh, if you need further explanation, please shoot me an email today. This is 1 over 16. 2g to the 5th over m squared. 9c to the 9th over d squared. Negative 40. Let's see, we get x to the negative fifth, y to the third. And we need to move the x to the bottom, so it's negative 40, y to the third over x to the fifth. Uh, number 18, we have negative 12, k to the eighth, j to the sixth can have the J first and then the K, as long as your exponents are correct. Um, on 19, again, these are bases. 3.77 is the base here, so you add the exponents. So you just get 3.77 to the first, or 3.77. For number 20, we get 16Y to the fifth, 21 square the negative 2 and you get 4 and then I'm going to do these simultaneously this would be m to the 10th and m to the 16th so that's m to the 26th uh, n to the 12th and n to the 8th so that's n to the 20th 22 we're going to take 3 to the 4th power 3 to the 4th power is 81 then we multiply the exponents, so it's 81k to the 16th. Uh, 23, again, I'll be kind of doing this simultaneously. That's 4x squared, x to the 5th, so it's x to the 7th. And then it's y to the 6th, y to the 5th, so y to the 11th. 24 is a lot of work, so this one I am going to going to kind of go through slowly with you. The first thing I would do would be multiply all the powers times that negative 2. Because what you'll see happens is the signs end up changing. So we get m to the second, m to the negative tenth, all over m to the fourth. We add our exponents on top. That's m to the negative eighth over m to the fourth. And then you can think about it th this two different ways. You can subtract negative eight minus four is negative 12. So you would get one over m to the 12th. Or if you just move that m to the eight, negative eighth down to the bottom to make it a positive eight, then in the denominator you have m to the eighth and m to the fourth, and you would add those together. So you get 1 over m to the 12th. 25 is negative 1 over 1,000. Twenty-six, you're going to have nine over four j squared. Twenty-seven, twelve minus twenty-two is a negative ten. So that g is going to be on the bottom, g to the tenth on the bottom, and negative two minus negative thirteen is positive eleven, which means the h stays on top. Number 28, we get 1 over a squared. 29. My computer's lagging here, so I apologize. It's like flipping all around. Okay, 29. Um, k to the seventh, and 30 is 7 squared, 
when you subtract 11 minus 9 and 7 squared is 49. Thirty-one and thirty-two, you're asked to find the error uh, that was made when simplified and give the correct solution. So the error, let's see, if we have negative three times five is negative fifteen, that's correct. X to the second and x to the first should give you x to the third. And then y to the third and y to the second should give you y to the fifth. So that's the error there is that they forgot that the one exponent on the x, oops, that's supposed to be a five. The one exponent on the x makes it x to the third. And on the next one, it looks like instead of multiplying the powers to the powers, they were adding. So it should be four x to the eighth, y to the sixth. Now that portion of the sample test is everything that's from chapter, <clears throat> the first half of chapter 7. And what you'll see now on a lot of our tests is some review. It's really important, um, particularly in algebra, that we're constantly reviewing topics we've covered. Uh, because algebra is such um, a big part of everything you end up doing from now till the end of your math career, we want to make sure that you're, you're really focusing on um, all of these topics at all times. So we'll be doing lots of review. Um, it also be really helpful when you get to taking that either I-STEP, if it's even called that by the time you take it, or whatever standardized test you take as a sophomore, uh, because it is a lot of algebra. So on number 35, uh, for most of these, I'm just going to give you the answers. If you have questions or, or need me to work that out, um, sometimes I think it's best if you try to go back once you have the answer uh, and figure out where your mistake is. So for 35, we get x equals 2. Lots of uh, distributive property, combining like terms, getting your variables on the same side, solving that equation. 36, we graph starting down at negative 1. We're going up 1 and over 4 in the positive direction. Down 1 over 4 this way. And then we get our line. No shading, it's an equation. Thirty-seven, when you solve the system, uh, probably most of you would multiply the bottom equation by two, and you end up with x is two and y is six. Equation in point slope form. <coughs> or excuse me, in slope-intercept form. Um, remember, it's perpendicular, so our slope is going to be the negative reciprocal. It's going to be a positive one-half. So when you plug in the point um, and the slope into point-slope form and then rearrange to slope-intercept form, you get y equals one-half x plus five. Now we have inequalities. So this was our most recent unit um, before we kind of had to pause for I-step or for for the Pythagorean theorem, but uh, number nine, wanting you to graph just one inequality, and you, know, you always have the option to rearrange this into slope-intercept form. I think it's easier here just to graph the intercepts. The x-intercept would be a positive four, and the y-intercept is a negative two. It's a dotted line. Uh, if you check zero, zero, 0 is not greater than 12, so it does not work. Uh, the point zero, 0, should not be included, which means we would shade below. If you rearrange this equation and did solve it for y, you would have the sign flip because of dividing by a negative 6. Flipping the sign then does make it a less than inequality, which also agrees with the shading below. For 40, we graph the first inequality. We start at negative 2 going up one and over two in the positive direction, down one and over two in the negative direction. We have a dotted line. Second equation, again, I'm gonna plot the intercepts. Uh, that's easier. 
but your starting uh, x-intercept is at negative 4 and your y-intercept is at positive 2. And you could double check this. Let's see, that's up 2 over 4. That's the same as up 1 over 2. So these line, these inequalities actually have the same slope. This one should be a solid line. So they are parallel. Um, and the first line we're shading above. The second line we'd be shading below. So the overlap, if we shade above this line, we shade below this line, this the second line I drew, then your overlap is this place in the middle. So that's where your overlap occurs. And I think that's the end of the sample test. If you have questions or something I didn't explain well enough, um, go ahead and shoot me an email. Again, if not, be ready to take your test tomorrow in class.